This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability and a generous investment by Julianne Wrigley. Later in 2003, in the book that, um, that uh, Aaron mentioned, Just Sustainability's Development in an Unequal World, myself, Bob Bullard and Bob Evans came up with this idea that really there is an inextricable link between environmental quality and human equality, that wherever environmental degradation is happening in the world, human rights and social justice are always being infringed, whether it's in the Amazon, in the Niger Delta with the Agoni people being uh, flared by the oil, um, you know, oil exploration, etc. So human rights and environmental degradation are linked. Now, let's think about this. Some data that I saw in the early 2000s said, look at countries like the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Finland. These countries have the highest commitment to social justice measured on women's empowerment, women in parliament, the number of um, uh, or, or access to medical care, um, kids in school and school, school achievement, etc. On a whole raft of factors, the Nordic countries are way out on social justice. That's not all. They're also the countries with the strongest commitment to environmental uh, protection. Nordic environmental regulations are some of the strongest in the world. There's a link between how we treat each other and how we treat the planet. Now, I'm not saying it's causal, but I'm saying there's some kind of correlation. And countries that are trashing their environment are often trashing their people as well. Um, we only have to look at places like Nigeria at the moment, where there is just you know, social justice issues are, are to the fore, uh, and also Nigeria has a, a terrible record on environmental protection. Uh, so, you know, we can see that there are links, and again, don't, don't get me wrong here, there's no causal link, but there is something going on when we treat environments and uh, treat people uh, very differently. Even in the United States, look at the difference between the northern states and their uh, record on social justice compared to the southern states. Similarly, this, the northern states have much stronger records with the Environmental Protection Agency and uh, following uh, EPA guidance than do the southern states, which are frequently infringing EPA guidelines. So even at the, the United States level, there is some tentative link between social justice and environmental protection. But really, it wasn't until this book came out about two or three years ago uh, that I think we really nailed the link. And I don't usually advertise other people's books, but I'm going to advertise about four books tonight that I really, really, really want you to read. This is called The Spirit Level, Why Equality is Better for Everyone. And the headline in this report is something that we progressives have known all along. It's not poverty as such that is corrosive, it's inequality. It's the gap between rich and poor. And the bigger the gap between rich and poor, and the book has 40 years of data to back this up, the bigger the gap between rich and poor, the higher the prison population, the more domestic violence, the more drug abuse, the, on every social uh, aspect, uh, countries that have got a bigger gap between rich and poor have more social deviance, social malfunctioning. And not only that, one of the chapters in the book was about climate change and sustainability. And what really caught my eye was this notion that inequality heightens competitive consumption. So basically, the bigger the gap between rich and poor, the poor start to try and emulate the, the lower middle class, the lower middle class, the middle class, the middle class, the upper middle class, and we're on an escalator of consumption. It's called keeping up with the Joneses. And strangely enough as well, they even show how advertising revenues are much bigger in countries with a big gap between rich and poor. The advertisers get in there and they manipulate people to consume to get to the next level. Now, what does this mean for us? Inequality heightens competitive consumption. Competitive consumption drives the carbon footprint of the country. So the argument of Wilkinson and Pickett is that those countries with the greatest inequality are also those with the biggest carbon footprint. So, if we really want to understand sustainability, our focus should be on both human equality and environmental quality together. This presentation is brought to you by Arizona State University's Julianne Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability for educational and non-commercial use only.